You know, there are some scientists who, um, they, they sort of uh, get into science accidentally. They, 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 you know, they met somebody or they saw somebody or whatever their story is. Uh, in my case, I can't ever remember not wanting to be a scientist, okay? Uh, I think I briefly flirted with the idea of driving a locomotive train uh, when I was probably two or three. I was very fortunate uh, to come from a family uh, that was very focused on education. My father uh, was a, uh, a, a doctor in a small town, uh, but uh, education and uh, especially science and medicine were uh, an important part of the sort of family um, culture. And so uh, I also grew up in the United States of America. Uh, I was born in 1950. Uh, the significance of that was that after World War II, America was really, uh, at that time, um, seen, uh, it was becoming, it already was, a very powerful country. Uh, it was taking on global responsibilities, including scientific research, uh, but also in a major competition with the Soviet Union, as everybody knows, uh, the so-called Cold War. And when uh, the Soviets uh, developed the nuclear bomb, uh, and when they also were the first to put satellites into space, uh, quite frankly, it, it scared the wham out of uh, certainly Americans, but certainly a lot of the world. And so it caused an, an energy, uh, en the whole enterprise of scientific research, especially the physical sciences, but also uh, biomedical sciences, uh, got energized. And so that's the environment I grew up in. And in that environment, scientists and medical doctors doing research and so on, we're really prized by society, and uh, I'm not entirely sure that's so true today, uh, but it was certainly true then, and we were seen as assets, uh, and, uh, every, uh, very little in the liability column. And so, you know, as a young boy, uh, your hero might have been a baseball player, but it might also have been a physicist, like, like Oppenheimer or Einstein. 